Well, thank you, Ross. Uh, we've come a very long way um, from what was an idea last April when we had a symposium and, and workshops, which uh, Ross uh, facilitated. Many of you uh, were there at the, um, um, in Toronto at that time, and um, uh, this is a really important stepping stone on the way to where we're ultimately um, heading. Um, there's a real buzz in the room, which I find um, you know, terrifically exciting. Uh, as, as somebody mentioned to me earlier, he said, I uh, hope you realize <clears throat> you've got the smartest people in youth mental health in the country in one room for the first time. And uh, I think that's fantastic. It's a real um, uh, indication of the interest and the passion um, that you people have. Um, we're delighted to, to welcome all of you to this uh, strengthening workshop. Many of you have traveled uh, from uh, in a long way. And on behalf of CIHR and our foundation, we're really grateful uh, not for just being here, but for the time and the energy and the passion uh, that you put into this project uh, to this point. Uh, the next three days, obviously, are going to be critical. Uh, from the feedback we've been getting, it seems clear that you share the view of CHR and the Graham Beck Foundation, partners, this partnership, uh, that this is a really big deal. Um, and uh, as you're all aware, um, the Graham Beck Foundation and CHR created this partnership, um, $25 million. It was announced last October uh, by the Minister of Health uh, in Ottawa, and it's branded as TRAM. And our aim is no less than to transform the mental health care system in Canada over the next five years for youths 11 to 25 who are suffering from or at risk of mental illness. The system, in spite of the best efforts of thousands of dedicated professionals, fails far too many people in many different ways. Our best efforts, you know, simply are not, not good enough, and we hear this over and over and over. To be sure, there has been progress over the past 25 years. Um, that's a point in time at which the system tragically failed Graham and our family. But this change um, over the last 25 years has essentially been incremental. Um, and what we need really is transformational change. And many people have asked um, a lot of questions, but one that keeps coming up over and over is what do we mean by transformational change? That means doing something better. Um, uh, sorry, uh, the point I want to make is, I, th I think to understand transformational change, uh, it's important to think uh, about it in contrast uh, to incremental change. Lim uh, incremental change is limited in scope, it's linear, and it's often reversible. Transformational change examines underlying beliefs, assumptions, and structures within an organization or a system, and we're talking about the mental health care system. It's much broader in scope, and the result, the system will fundamentally change the way it operates. There's examples, which you'll hear from today, in HIV, stroke, and Australia, um, and what's been going on uh, there, which is very exciting. You've got to think about game-changing, paradigm-breaking. Uh, it must stick, i.e. be permanent, to qualify, and therefore it must win over major stakeholders. And this is a critical objective uh, of TRAM on the way to our final objective, which is to change the mental health care system. And we are only interested in funding proposals and networks that have this promise. We want and we need the evidence that will enable a paradigm shift to occur in the treatment of mentally ill youth. <clears throat> and we want, um, uh, basically this is the challenge uh, before you. And we want to express our profound gratitude for all of you for embarking on this journey to fundamentally change the way we deliver care to youth suffering from or at risk of mental illness. Now, I'd like to say just a word about CHR on the way, and I just want to echo uh, Kelly's comments. This has been a, a terrific partnership in every, every way. It's uh, um, uh, original, it's highly productive, um, it's been fun working with uh, all the people at CHR. Uh, they've been really terrific partners in every way. And right from the shared vision at the top, Alain Baudet, who's the, uh, the director of the CHR, who will be speaking uh, uh, tomorrow night at our um, uh, major dinner, um, and Tom Enso will also be speaking, representing the, he's the director of the NIMH. Um, Alan Baudet's leadership has been terrific in moving the CIHR into new directions with SPORE, the strategy for patient-oriented research. And as Kelly mentioned, uh, this is the first 
of uh, several sport projects the CIHR has uh, underway. Also, I want to mention uh, Jane O'Ban is the Vice President of Research and Chief Scientific Officer who's not with us today, but she's been terrific. And Tony Phillips, who just came in from Tokyo, he's the Scientific Director. I'm sure, I'm sure you all know for the Institute for Neuroscience, Mental Health and Addiction. And uh, Kelly, uh, who you met earlier, and David Peck have been terrific to work with, as have a number of other people at CIGR who've been here with us uh, today. And I just want to mention um, uh, the people from the Graham Beck Foundation, too. There's uh, um, Ian and Rob Beck, Graham's uh, two younger brothers that, uh, sitting over there. Um, there's Jim Hughes, who's the president of our uh, foundation. Uh, my wife, Ray, couldn't be here, but many of you know her from the past. She'll be uh, uh, definitely there tomorrow night. Um, and there's uh, uh, Joelle, uh, Caroline, and uh, uh, Katie, who have uh, been doing tremendous work behind the scenes to really help uh, make this uh, all happen. Also, I want to mention Jacques Handlitz. Uh, who was the lead in TRAM, and I think you've all had a lot of dealings with uh, Jacques and uh, Michelle Campbell, who works very closely uh, you know, with Jacques. Uh, the partners, uh, you know, the bottom line, the partners have created a powerful working relationship, which gives us confidence this, that this job will get done, uh, and we're really um, determined to make that happen. Finally, it's my great pleasure to introduce the selection panel, and again, to echo Kelly's comments, um, it is truly an independent panel. Uh, even though it works in a very different way um, from, uh, from uh, the traditional selection panels. We're unbelievably fortunate to have nine brilliant, hugely experienced people who are playing this crucial role in transforming an idea into the reality of hopefully changing Canada's mental health care system for young people. They're working in a unique way, not just passing judgment on best proposals, but actually working before, during, and after with the various proposals and networks to form one pan-Canadian network that will execute the research that we're interested in. They are effectively a collaborating selection panel. They're going to be working with you to improve your proposals, improve your teams, and to borrow a phrase from Star Trek, they will accompany the successful network on its five-year mission to boldly go where no national network has gone before. <laughs> Uh, they have chosen you to be part of the workshop and will be working closely with you to identify opportunities and strengthen approaches. And we're deeply indebted to them, their commitment and their passion uh, has simply been incredible. Uh, their bios are on the TRAM website, uh, but I just want to introduce uh, briefly um, each of them. From the research side, uh, we have uh, uh, Nina Schooler from New York, Howard Goldman from uh, Baltimore, Catherine Gill from uh, Montreal and McGill University, and Pat McGorry from Australia, who's done incredible work transforming the mental health care system in Australia. On our patient and family reps, we have uh, Austin Martin and Pam Gillette. Uh, from service delivery, David Levine. And from policy, uh, Paula Tyler. From Alberta, who couldn't be here, her daughter's getting married. I asked her to see if she could change the date of the wedding, but uh, <laughs> that didn't seem to go over too well. And uh, our chair, uh, Dennis Furlong, uh, former uh, Minister of Health in New, uh, New Brunswick. And uh, lastly, I want to introduce um, our uh, youth panel. Uh, we have three young people uh, who will be advising the selection panel. Uh, if they could just st stand up as I mention their names, Aaron Brown, Aaron Hodgson, and Lucy Langford. And uh, we're very excited to have you uh, with us to bring the youth uh, perspective uh, to the selection panel and uh, to be helpful, as I know you're, you're going to be in, in, uh, in what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, they They're all actively involved in uh, uh, a variety of different capacities in promoting the well-being of adolescents and with particular emphasis on, uh, on, on uh, mental health. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Dennis, uh, to uh, carry on uh, to the chair of the selection committee.